Web3 and blockchain are these big, scary words. And for marketers that haven't worked in this realm before, they might be a little bit daunting. But the fact is that you absolutely must understand the blockchain if you're going to succeed as a marketer in the future. And that future is coming fast. So in this video, let's talk about it. We're going to run through what a blockchain is, why it's interesting for marketers, how it's changing the marketing landscape, and how you can get involved. My name is Trent Canelli. I'm a Web3 marketing strategist, and this is the best place for you to learn about Web3, NFTs, AI, and how to market it all. So if that sounds good to you and you're excited, make sure you like this video, subscribe to my channel if you're into it, comment to let me know what you're looking to market in the blockchain ecosystem. I would love to help you out. But until then, let's get started. All right, so let's start off with the most basic thing here. What is a blockchain? The simplest way of thinking about blockchains is like an accounting ledger made out of Lego blocks. So here's what I mean by that. The blockchain records transactions in the form of blocks. And once that block has been closed, the truth is forever written in digital stone there, right? But okay, I know that that was like the worst definition ever because there's a lot of context in that explanation that is really easy to miss because there are things that you don't know. What's a block? How does this whole thing really work together? So let's go even deeper on some of these questions. And this is where the Legos really come into play because a Lego is finite. So for the most part, each one has six sides. There's nothing else to it, right? And when you put that Lego on top of another Lego or next to it or whatever, it stops becoming an individual Lego and is now part of the whole project, right? You don't have a single Lego or a bucket of Legos. You have Elsa's castle, which in kind of a weird way is the same thing happening with the blockchain here. See, a block on the blockchain is completed every Every 60 seconds, at least on the Ethereum blockchain, that might be different depending on which blockchain you're using. And when that block is completed, it's placed onto Elsa's castle and it's unmovable. It's like President Business coming along and super gluing the Legos together. But in this case, it's a good thing, okay? Because you see every transaction that occurred during that block, which wallets bought what tokens, NFTs, what contracts were created, etc. And that's really it. It's an open ledger anyone can look at, write to, and interact with. And 60 seconds after it started, it's closed and they open a new one and it just goes on and on like that forever. Okay, great. So now why should you as a marketer care about this? It sounds like just another technology that may or may not take off, right? Well, there's a pretty big difference here between blockchain and something like I don't know, Google Plus. Google Plus was a social network, but ultimately it didn't really add a lot to the market. People didn't see a reason to switch from their favorite social networks to this thing that Google created, whatever it was, there was just nothing unique about it. But the difference here is that blockchain is bringing along with it cultural change. Because even though this is a very transparent process that almost anybody can get involved in, it's also a very private thing. And people really value their privacy in the blockchain space. It's private. This concept of real digital ownership, of getting more deeply involved in the things that you care about while seeing actual value come back to you for that involvement, it's gaining interest because it's a cultural shift as much as it is a technological improvement. And that's really where we've seen changes take hold in the past. I mean, just look at the internet. It changed everything about how society works, right? I mean, everything we do today involves the internet. You're watching this on the internet, right? And honestly, if it didn't have that kind of an impact, it wouldn't be this hugely valuable place that we live and work in today. It just wouldn't be. What that means is that the adoption rate is going to keep steadily increasing. There's already around 10 to 16% of people that are in some way involved in blockchain, be that simple investing or getting involved in Web3 products. And that number is only growing. So why should you be interested as a marketer? Because you can't afford not to be. This cultural change is going to come to your doorstep, whether you're ready for it or not. And it comes along with massive changes to the marketing landscape as well. All right, so let's talk about those. And I've gone into depth on a few of these already, which I'll point out as we go down the list here. But I think it's best to kind of get a broader understanding of the changes to your marketing here. And I want to first talk about your niche. Now, you should be familiar with niche. If you're not, I've talked about it in many other videos. But let's just talk about kind of how the differences are here, because niching down is going to be more important and more specific as blockchain and Web3 adoption continues. And that's because anonymity and the decentralized nature of the blockchain, aka not being pegged to any fiat currency or government, makes it possible to separate from big companies much more easily. 
See, this is where that cultural shift really comes into play. People in these spaces and increasingly people throughout the web don't want to deal with the same data issues that big companies have been slamming them with over the last few years, like Cambridge Analytica. So they're going to look for places where people can connect, but that also don't have that same oversight. And those spaces, generally speaking, allow for people to group into more specific niches than has been true in the past. I mean, just look at Discord. This is a huge go-to solution for the vast majority of the Web3 world. And that's true because there can be a bit more anonymity baked into it. And because Discord's style of oversight isn't the same as a traditional social service. So if I want to find people who only want to talk about utility NFTs available for real locations in New York City, I can probably easily get that on Discord. Which means that your process for finding groups is different, right? When everyone was on Instagram or YouTube or Facebook, it was as simple as kind of hunting around on the platform until you started to identify the right keywords, the right hashtags, the right influencers in that community, and then you kind of go use that information to your advantage. Now, I make that sound simple. Of course, that took a fair amount of time and research, but with blockchain communities, you're looking at a whole new level of digging into the data and the research here. You need to figure out which platforms they're on, how to access those platforms, and in some instances, how to find the right server where your target audience is most active. Because places like Mastodon, for instance, don't put everyone on a single server. You can create your own server and break away from that single overlord situation that you've seen in Facebook and Twitter and, and Instagram over the last few years. And that's why understanding your niche is so important because you need to be prepared to spread your influence across a lot more channels, which I know sounds very daunting. I mean, I've said in the past that unless you're Gary Vee and you have a gigantic social media team behind your brand, you don't have the ability to stretch across every available channel. So you should really try to focus on two to three channels, right? But of course, if you do that, you focus on your two to three, you can still automate your influence onto other social sites. You can use things like Zapier or, you know, develop up your own apps to get your content onto other sites. It's just, it's never one-to-one. -one. It doesn't fit perfectly. And the other problem is that you still have to keep up with comments and interactions on those sites, which takes up a lot of time too. All right. So now that we've covered the niche quite extensively, we could cover your channels. I mean, we could go through SEO and email, blah, 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 blah. But I've done that in this video and others like it. So let's talk about ways to incorporate blockchain into what you're already doing. And I want to start with this right here. There are no half measures. The blockchain community is full of rabid true believers. That's just the phase that it's in right now, which means that you are promoting your business to users on the chain that absolutely need to believe that you are very invested in this technology, not just to make money, but emotionally as well. They have to see the passion. Just like Reddit users and ads, it's very easy for the blockchain community to sniff out a non-believer. Shun the non-believer. Shun. Shun. Or someone who's trying to capitalize on a trend. And I know that that isn't you, but most people might not. They might not know you. So when you're promoting, you have to adapt to more than just the ad campaign. I mean, don't get me wrong. If you're advertising on AdX or BitClave, you're already going in the right direction. But let's just say that you're running BitClave ads for one of these decentralized apps, whatever you're offering on a decentralized advertiser and the traffic that you're picking up is excited to buy, but then they get to your site, they've clicked on their ad, you've, they're looking through your site, they like what they see, they're ready to buy, they go to push that purchase button, all of a sudden they realize there's no option for crypto payments on your website. What user in their right mind will believe that you actually want to be part of this community if you don't have that as an option? So how can you go all in? Well, let's run through a quick list of things that will really drive the point home here. So first, obviously, accept crypto payments on your site. It doesn't have to be every crypto out there. That would be kind of insane. But if you accept some of the big players, Ethereum, DAI, Chainlink, and if you even want to go as far as adopting multiple chains like Polygon and Bitcoin, that already goes a long way to getting people to go a little further with you. Second, collaborate. There are a lot of big names in the space, and the more you talk, the more people will believe that your intentions are pure. Third, build your own blockchain-based infrastructure. I know this one isn't exactly for everybody because it can definitely get technical, but there is no doubt that you're invested if you're putting in the time and effort and money to be part of the space. 
Fourth, run blockchain related events in your industry. Whatever your industry is, there is a blockchain solution. And if you're running the events, you're holding yourself out as the expert in that field, which is gonna remove any doubt that you're part of the blockchain community. And finally, fifth, I'm just going to say get creative, okay? I could tell you about a hundred different specific things that you could do, but at the end of the day, it just comes back to looking at your specific business, identifying the best ways to integrate the blockchain, and taking action from there. So there you go. I hope that that helped you to identify with blockchain a little bit more. Blockchain marketing is still kind of new, but it's going to be a big part of the future, and it's coming faster than you realize. So I hope you're ready to jump in. Let me know what you're looking at possibly marketing in the blockchain, what kind of struggles you're having. I would love to be able to help you even in just the comments. So please leave a comment down there for me. Otherwise, make sure you like this video, subscribe to my channel if you're into it, and I will catch you in the next one.